and we move on to item three, consideration of the agenda as presented. Are there any additions? No. Okay, the only uh, change we'd like to make is we'd like to um, switch 3.1 to 3.2. We'll lead with 3.2, the construction update. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Well, I'll make that motion. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign, motion carries. Welcome to the table, A. Construction update. Construction update, and we do have two parts to this update. Uh, one is the update itself, and then I've got uh, Ben and Scott here to touch based on the exterior signage. So we'll get a vote on that as well. All right, here is the. Take a vote. Yeah, not vote, we're just going to input. Provide direction. Yeah, provide direction, yeah. All right, here's your typical uh, presentation. We've got the, the front entrance here. Uh, biggest thing that have changed on, on the exterior is the retaining wall is not complete. The gas seals are not complete on the lower right hand side there. So those are the biggest things that have changed uh, throughout the two or three weeks that I presented last. They are starting to final grade the areas for the sidewalk and uh, next week we'll be uh, installing uh, the sidewalk itself. Moving on to the front entrance, you can see the structure for the uh, marquee sign to reach Shockby High School, so that is up now. Again, really final grading. Second place canopy and side of next week. Then as you enter into the building, you can see this is the front vestibule. Uh, really what's left to do is uh, wall, wall tile, uh, ceiling grid and pad, and carpet in the space. All of the vestibule area is enclosed and are weather protected. So carpet will be installed the 23rd month in this space. As you enter through those vestibule doors, this is the uh, Marquee Academy, Academy's of Shopping sign that you'll see on the left hand side, and the administration to your left. Uh, the floors are in, they're just a little dirty, so they just need up. Uh, so wall tile on, and the column wraps are continuing. You can see on the left hand side the wall tiles near completion there. Uh, we'll start installing the uh, ceiling grid at the end of the week here. And then lights, uh, diffusers will occur early next week. And if you were to turn around back at the entrance, this is the shot. Uh, and then you can to the left you'll see Parts and communication on the curved wall that you see from outside. And this is the west entrance of the arts and communication kind of entrance corridor. You can see the ceiling grid is going in. We call them the clouds. So the padding will go in next week as well. Um, the slope ceiling that you'll see to the left is going to be installed uh, next week. Carpet will be started on August 23rd. Just to the left of it, you can see how it tapers down a little bit. The metal ceiling that matches up with the existing If you go back to that's okay. Just visually, I couldn't tell the story. And then this is entering the west entrance. You can see. Uh, Really bust up there just on the wall tile finishes. Um, the ceiling will be finished at 822 and that's when the carpet will be installed. So really just ceiling with the wall tile carpet left. And then the new auditorium, the <coughs> seats are in this being protected right now. Handrails and the projection screens are going in this week. Uh, the stage flooring is going to be starting to be installed next or late this week. And then the carpet in the seating areas can play this week. And then the curtains next week. I actually had a question maybe from Ben. Um, the question was asked to me that tension grid that you can hang lighting and whatnot from, the lighting is hanging above the grid. Does it throw off any sort of a gobo effect where you get like grid lines on the stage? No, it's it's all designed so there's enough spacing between it between the wires, so it should have a real minimal minimal to non, uh, non you won't be able to 
look to be able to receive a shadow. I was asking if it's good, if it's all going to look like we're all, you know, in the ridge or something like that. Flat. I think so. <laughs> okay. I have a different question. Um, and somebody correct me, I've been at the auditorium a gazillion times, but I'm pretty sure the floor, I mean, there's not carbon in, in some of the, the seats. Here. Not so. The whole seating area is not carpeted, right? Right. Rest and yet we're choosing to do it here. I'm just curious as to why are we carpeting here versus like just the aisles? Uh, we're, we're just carpeting the aisles. Okay. So the picture. So when you talk about carpeting, it's not around the seats. It's the aisles. Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. Here's our exterior shot of the parts of communication. Again, the big changes here is just the, the uh, inflation of the retaining wall that they're backfilling that space and um, starting the final grade. That thrust stage again, there was a chance that it may be ready for the 28th. Is that any read on that one? It's, we're obviously, we're trying to get to that point. We did the 28th make accommodations for the main auditorium yeah. size. Sarah, I think we decided we're going to yeah. the large right. auditorium. Yeah, we're planning we're that way. Okay. Thank you. The shots of the classrooms and the, uh, the big stairwell, stairway uh, corridor. So everything's finished up here, ceiling pads and carpets and big things in here. We will have an elevator inspection and uh, fire alarm testing on Wednesday. So that's when we can have camp occupancy and we start being inspector. Part of the art communication again, you can see that uh, stair tower entrance. That's also going to be an area for uh, parking to display, and then the flex classrooms on the second level is a beautiful floor ceiling. Where is that upper right photo? I think? Upper right, so if you're looking out, see that big stairway tower with the canopy? Okay, that'd be looking out on the second level. Okay. So the only thing that's left to do there is the uh, wire tension for the Try to picture what hallway it's overlooking. It's, it's back in the back <laughs> wing, I guess. Yeah, yeah in the yeah. communication yeah, wing. Yeah, the west side. I didn't realize there's going to be a. I like it. I didn't. First floor is kind of where you turn to go to the back seat yeah. area. I also didn't realize there'd be an overlook, but I like it. Yeah. So if you're going to head to the left, that'd be the call of music area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the suites. Okay, that would be your parts of communication. So there's a similar spot. space to the other academies. Yeah. Just their own version. Here is the band completed. You know, final clean, essentially, but with flooring in, bases in, and a beautiful space that's completed. Then moving to our south tower, it's been completed for a while. We're just showing us some exterior shots of the outdoor classroom. Um, as you can see, the landscaping is going in, uh, like holes need to be put in, and the pavers. <coughs> Obviously, the side will next week as well. And inside the cell tower, this is the first floor uh, engineering manufacturing academy. You can see all the floorings complete. Everything's complete with the exception to the curb we had to found that's being installed uh, this week. And signage and graphics will be installed uh, next week. Here's our east Tower slash freshman academy. Uh, the exchange here, like I mentioned before, was the, uh, the signage, the structural the signage. Uh, final grades there, and uh, really that's it for the exterior. And then going inside of the new administration space, this is the uh, nice conference room uh, adjacent to the front desk. The bottom right is the front desk. So you can see the furniture is going in. Back to the engineering and manufacturing lab. This was uh, existing footprint that we converted to the design lab. It's so really just uh, furniture left and uh, a little bit of countertop work in there. So, substantially complete. And then into the survey, unfortunately, we've got a lot of staging and materials in the way to give us a nice shot of the front entrance. But uh, if you were to walk past right now, some of the wall tile on the front entrance has started. <laughs> So that's kind of our biggest critical path. It's going to be wall tile. Um, they started um, in there today and started seeing green there as well. 
and that's probably not going to be done by the 28th? No, the goal is, so we prioritize, obviously, the goal is to get everything, the surgery, all the car, everything done. Um, so the inspection for the existing kitchen and expanded freezer includes taking place the 20th, the week from today. So we'll be able to haul in uh, food for the 20th, 20th, 22nd. And then um, by this date, uh, 28th will be close. So what we're going to do is prioritize and have them start in the servery, not focus on the a la carte yet, because we have a contingent plan um, if the a la carte isn't ready, it's, a, it's an additional footprint. So we would just serve a la carte out of the coffee shop. And that's our contingent plan. But again, the goal is to obviously get everything done in time. Shot of the servery. Again, a lot of the ceiling grid is going in now. Uh, a lot of these walls are ready for tile. See on the last slide here is the whole tile going up, so you can see how much things we've done in the day. So as long as they keep the resources here and labor here, uh, we should be But we're going to continue to monitor that. Scott, did you design the panel? Sean did. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. Come on. <laughs> so that's what I had again. High level work. So thanks to complete with all of the south tower, east tower, and existing footprint. Um, so really, all the stuff is going to the server and what we call A, B, and C. Excellent. So we were made. You could save a lot of time by just <laughs> walking up and saying that to him. <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. My legacy question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be long gone. I didn't know what's going on here. Okay, part two. So, yeah, part two. Um, so, no, um, first of all, it's good to be in front of the board and see everyone again. Um, and uh, Bob has been doing a good job monitoring the process. Uh, and we are engaging in the topics. And, Lively topics and one of those that we spent some time on is signage. And it's partly because this is such a uh, big undertaking project, the building, and um, you know, for most people, they haven't seen a school this size, so it is important to help people find it, understand what it is, not pass on it, think it's some corporate campus or something. And it's cool. Yeah, our college, community college. So um, early on in the design of the signage and wayfinding and how do we get people <laughs> to know where the front door is and all that thing. You know, the usual things like the flag gets dwarfed in something this size. So that's why there's lots of signage on this project. Uh, and early on, I mean, I think the first sign everyone saw that kind of got everyone excited was the, the West Entry, the activities entry. All of a sudden, that, sign, that vertical sign book. I was like, what's that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Is that going to be the front door? I heard that, right? And all of them, there's a bigger one going on the other end. So just this, just we saw that just go up this week. The sign's going, I think next week, we've got one. It's a sign for the other end of the tower. The main entrance, the yeah, the front vertical. Yeah, the next week, we think? Well, the last one. Yeah. Very last, yeah. It's but we can at least see the size shape. Uh, and what's interesting is in this rendering, you can actually see the tip of that. But in A's photo of this view, you couldn't see the tip of it. So it's like that, even that, at a 50 foot height, is how big that front door was. And Bach gets to install that right Yeah, they're going to help that. But you can't, you can't fully see that from the road. And you can see it from the park. So we do need to get it, get it to turn into the site. So I guess there's a little monument sign out in the grass, but everyone's looking at this big building trying to understand what is it, where am I supposed to go? One of the challenges that we saw early on in the design was that front corner of all the glass and the canopy. We want to make sure that it wasn't a front entry, that people didn't start shooting for that and talk a little bit about that in the early phases. That's why the wall, one of the reasons the wall is in there kind of block you and say, you know, that's not a friendly entry. Keep going, keep hanging on, and go towards the flag. So, 
so there's all those considerations. And then, you know, in your uh, high school before it was uh, expanded, it had a, a sign that said Shock High School of High and Long. Fairly discreet, fairly small. And we knew that that sign wasn't going to make it, it gets covered up. We knew that sign scale it wasn't going to be enough to deal with now the new size of the high school and so what we showed in the drawings and what was uh, in the construction package was the signage as you see it in this image and that's some fairly large letters they're uh, like three and a half feet tall thereabouts which is a, about the same size that's on the field house already which you've been getting used to but that size letter that same font which is your branding font that you've come up with for uh, the district. Uh, and because of that size and because of the shape of the, that's actually the fly loft of the new, new auditorium. For the thrust. Yes. Thrust stage. 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 So, and because of this, again, I think the appropriate scale of letters, we, and the multi-directions that you approach this building, we thought, well, maybe it works to put shock at on one side and high school on the other. Nobody's really thought looking at a building straight on, ever. You know, if it really worked to get straight on. Would that help? Would that help folks see what it is, first of all, and then maybe kind of get you to think turning the corner, you know, coming around to the east side and to the front door. That was the genesis of this layout. Well, so as we show the renderings to Bach every month, it was like, do we look at it like this or not? And I think Bach said, you know, we should have a discussion at the full board before the letters go up. We did do some options of, and I think the, the concern that was raised is that I can't see the shock and peak part when I'm coming from the west. And I can't, you know, so I'm seeing high school and that seems partial. So that was a question raised. And so to address that, one option we created, we created a couple of different options. I think Bach really whittled it down to this or the other option, which, which uh, Ben has here, which is putting Shopee and High School on the same side. And I think in this version, it's just made it slightly smaller than under, but at that scale we're really talking, which is One of the issues with making a change later in the game is that there often are some changes in cost. There's a minor savings in, in the letters if they go to a smaller uh, $600 range or something. But there is more cost in changing the lighting for those, or the electrical going to the lighting because the precast panels that build the fly off actually have the conduits drilled through them ready to go to the other way But in the whole scheme of things, we want to get this right too. And we want people to feel like it. for high school and feels like it's your decision. So that's why the discussion is coming here to, to widen the circle and see what others react to it. And then I only sent this out really to some of you for the all the yeah. And we got, I only saw Sean's feedback because she wasn't yeah. here. And I can't summarize your feedback. That's okay. It, it was yeah. a yeah. Can we it was, was, yeah. it was yeah. not in the middle. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, <laughs> both were great. Yeah. It was a like, so. But I will say, uh, and what you're seeing in the rendering, probably the, the renderings, you know, we do our best to simulate mm -hmm. reality. Uh, some things work better than others. Those letters are actually brushed aluminum, uh, like a lot of the signage has been already. So they're they're metal, just like the ones in the vertical sign at the activities entry, only larger. And then they have a light inside them that lights on the on the wall, on the precast wall, to put a glow around them. Okay. So they have to kind of a standoff the wall to the wall. Are the towers lit the same way? Yep, okay. same way. Yep. And the uh, activity center. Yeah, I mean, same both. 
ends. And then both ends, yeah. all sides are kind of the same approach. So you mentioned the conduit <coughs> pre-drilled and yeah. where the shock P was designed originally yes. set to go. Yeah. Is that something that can be easily capped and protected or would it just Yeah, they'll be plug, they would plug it somehow. They have a talk uh, I mean, Anyway, we're talking small conduit. Okay. It's pretty close. It's not a big can or anything like that. No, I wouldn't expect it to be that small. And what's the difference in cost? We did some like 22,000. Yeah, we can split some of those. And what you're showing here is the plus 22,000? Yes. Yep. Okay. So it'd be the ad. I keep the point of. You're standing on 17, and all you see is high school. It looks kind of fairly generic, right? Because the field house is pretty far away where you see the nearest shock me. Then again, you are standing in the middle of the shock me. So hopefully, you know <laughs> hopefully. I've been lost before. So, <coughs> Scott was being diplomatic. Uh, the reason we're having this conversation is because I was the one that was, that was getting really uh, wind around the axle on this. And it's because, in, in my <clears throat> estimation, you can only see the contiguous words from the east. If you're coming from the, from the south, you're going to see Shockby. You're not going to see high school. If you're coming from the west, you're going to see high school. And if you're driving on the north, on the highway, you only see, because the way the housing is, you only see high school. So there's only one direction you will ever see the two. Admittedly, right now, that is the probably the biggest traffic way. Yeah. Um, but with the way Shockby's growing, it's going to be different. I don't like the idea of seeing just high school alone or Shockby alone. Um, I don't like the fact that it's going to cost us a little more. But given where we're at on the budget, I'm, I'm willing to spend that in this case because I think, again, it needs to be right. And I think if we end up with the other, we're going to have the question rightfully. So in my opinion, I have the question, why did you do that? Yeah, it's creative. It's kind of artsy. But you can only see high school and you can only see Shockby. So you, you, was like, Tony, you said freeway. Tony said you can actually see this from 169 as you're passing. Yep. Given the way the yeah, and you can only see that facing. Yeah, you see that right here. You, you cannot see, see the facing. So, the so it's not just for the people who live on the north side of 17th Avenue or are driving on 17th. It's actually visible from. Yeah, it's visible. Avenue. from It's amazing how visible it is. Yeah, but you can't part, see the, there's there's the east wall. Yeah. It's there. It gives you a little view. <clears> so it, it'll be real clear. It's a high school. <clears throat> But it's just high school. Is it in Eric High School? Yeah. So my counter to that has always been, you look at, you know, if you're coming directly from the west, look at our field house, it says Shock B Sabres, and loud and proud, as well as our monument. Granted, it's a humble little monument, but it is right there in the grass. So I think we have plenty of distinctive markers that clearly differentiate what building this is. Um, and as a result, I can't, I just can't justify 22,000 when it is very identifiable what this what this was. The likelihood that somebody appears on the scene and doesn't know where they're at or why they're there, I'd maybe question some other things, but not the signage. That's all I'll say on that one. I will say, coming from the east, having it on the two <coughs> faces, I actually kind of like that. It makes you look at the whole building. I thought artistic yeah I would agree and that's the way I go up there and, and, um, but Scott it's from Swanson I hear what you're saying about the field house frankly that's a country mile away by the time you get there I mean it's it's a really big building but when you're driving it's a matter of seconds no, no. right you know yeah. but this was my contention it's not about I <coughs> we didn't need the signage to begin with if you don't know this is high school you've got bigger problems we have all kinds of signage. So I, uh, my argument would be the reason we're incurring costs is because we're moving electrical ductwork. I'm like, I don't need that. Put some letters up there. You don't need that as far as I'm concerned. So I, I got other ways to deal with that. It's not the fact that high school alone, you don't know that. That's not it. It's, it just looks, I'll use my word, silly. To just see shop people, just see high school. And from three, there's only one direction you can see everything. And from three directions, you see one thing. Can you show a picture from the parking lot? The east parking lot. Uh, we the put that in his You know, one of you, you know, is if you're driving from the south, 
You don't see it. And this is one of the reasons I you see that. You, uh, you, see the, you see the. No, you don't see shot. You see shot. From the cell? Yeah, but it's by the time you get down, you're basically at the turn. Yeah, the high yeah. you're past the. Past the yeah. <coughs> it's what you're going to show you in a second. This is what you're going to see. It's the one, it's the shock of the off center. And that was the other thing somebody said, I forget who said it, but somebody said, yeah, the letters are off center this way. Whereas at least it looks balanced with the other. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. So if you're in the east parking lot, you're looking at that shock view. It looks kind of funny with shock view kind of to the side. No, I know for going that's not the right letter. Right. No, it's, it's not the scale, it's not the right lettering. So it might be yeah, that's better or worse. I don't know. It's not the right font. It's all, all caps. The point is it'll end right at the yes. right at the corner. And you're gonna have the tower to know where to go in the engine. So it's not like you're gonna need shock view. Yeah, not true. With the true view from the parking lot, you're gonna have the yeah. No, I'm not a fan of the 22,000 either, but it's just. Um, I just know we have some other line items that. Um, we're hold on, hold on. We're uh, under budget. Sure. So let's let's. Granted, it's still 22,000, but we are under budget, healthy. So if we're going to make an investment and this is the right thing for the choose to get in the direction, that's that's not uh, an indication. It's just a recognition. It's going to cost. Now you're making my mind go to what else can we get for 20 <laughs> you know, I agree that it looks better to all be on one panel. I would like you to say shot in high school. I just don't know what that 22000 if I'm comfortable spending that, if there's something else that's more substantive than style. And just with those painted okay. sections, is the bond money as well. So it's not like it can be used. Right. right. But we're hundreds of thousands of dollars to the good. So Are it's we? not, yeah. Yeah, so we're not, we're not in a situation where it's going to, it's not either or. Now, granted, it's still an opportunity cost, meaning if you spend it here, you can't spend it on something else. But that's not, it's not either or. What do you think, Angela? I think $22,000 is a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not caught up on one version or the other. I just know $22,000 is a lot of money. And not knowing what other things have been put aside or, or are still on the topic of conversation. It's hard for me to say, yep, let's just do $22,000. Because I'm not part of the box, so I don't know what is still in the works, what are things we're giving up, what are, you know, what can we do differently. So without much information, I would say no to $22,000. That's a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's just, it, from that view, it does look off-center, but and it is that it's yeah. doing the wrap-up well, purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. I'm not saying that was a mistake. Yeah. I think we could sit here and debate for four hours. I think we could. I like it the way it was intended, and I can't support adding a price or adding sure. points to just to chip the way. If we were going strictly on artistic, I like how it's offsetting if you look at just geography and I like how it wraps around aside from that. Um, I too think that it drives taxpayers nuts when we say, well, it's only 22 compared to, I don't know how much the building costs. Compared to the cost of the building, it's not much. I think that drives people crazy. And I just don't want to have another reason to drive them crazy. Just remember that when we get slammed with why the hell did you put these letters this way? That's kind of but if I come back with the 22, no, not for $100,000 would be good. It, it's just, it's it's a mistake, I think, to put these, put the signs this way. It's a mistake. Matt, do you have a lead? We have to land this plane because we have to give this guy's direction. I say go through the original design, save the 22, and kind of more impactful way to well, we don't find it. <laughs> it leaves us opportunities to find itself. I still want to know what I So it feels like without going around the horn again, it's more of a four to two in the direction of taking it as is. And Sean I'm voted for both. And Sean's not here, so it doesn't count. And it's not a vote, it's just a direction. Yeah, so just it's consensus. Consensus. We need to gain some consensus. So I think you have your direction. 
Anything else? Clear. That's very clear. That's right. Was there anything else, Steve? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay, thanks everybody for that. Let's move back up to item 3.1. Um, Jeff, you want to come on up? Let's talk about our enrollment study here and your guests. study and a, and a housing study. It's been a few years, I think, since the district had, had completed a study. So um, we get the PowerPoint going here. So Ann Thomas and, and uh, Jim Sheehan from the School of Finances. Thank you. Is this difficult? Sarah, I have a question. Just some things we want to highlight. Oh, if you're you able to. to. If you're able to, that would be. If that's quicker, that would be great. I'm on my way there, but if you're able to get there faster, that would be fine. Okay. Um, Jim, you I'm there. Are you there? You got it. Okay. We'll let you do it. Then. Okay. Before we start, um, um, a lot to read. It was good. Interesting stuff. Well, it's an interesting history. We're there. We were pleased to be invited to kind of look over your shoulder and give your thoughts. So, <coughs> just here. Okay. All right. You want to share? Sure. Show it out. I'm not a yeah. Lots of rendering. Enrollment. Would you like to see this? Here. 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 Uh, it's definitely nice to be here in the spring. There's some development going on in the community, and there's some feeling that you want to do. Someone maybe, as I mentioned, look over your shoulder and give us our thoughts on what might be happening in terms of enrollment change based on development. So, we felt the proposal would be goal being to uh, provide enrollment projections for five years. So, with that, Jim's going to talk a little bit about enrollment projection basics as we kick things off. Oh, well, we've been uh, projecting enrollment for a number of years in school finance that uh, financial planning. Before you do financial planning, you have to do enrollment planning. Uh, it has changed over the years. Uh, I've written something here in the paragraph here. In past years, uh, we could look at enrollment could be viewed in a manner that allowed enrollment changes to be studied based on housing characteristics. It's still important. Housing is still important. There are other things that are that are, that are more critical that we have to document if we're looking at enrollment. And this is a good example of one of the challenges to, to projecting enrollment now. This is just the last year in, in, your, in your school district. The enrollment options out of your district increased by 48 students. The enrollment options in increased by 46 students. The charter school enrollment increased by 48 students. Homeschooling went down to new and non-public down 25. So it, it's not 
uh, linear that can we can estimate real validly what's going to happen two, three, four years out. So one of our recommendations a little later on is that we have to make sure we look at this on an annual basis, not with a major study, but just to see if the trends are, are, are still continuing. When we look at an increase in enrollment options out of 48 students, if we look at the density in housing of single family homes, we are yielding 0.57 students for each single family home. So that in itself is like 90 homes to yield that 48 students. So we can do a lot in this school district, or you can do a lot in this school district, I believe, that will uh, strengthen your enrollment. But uh, those are the comments that I want to make at this time, simply that it is very difficult because there are so many moving parts, and we don't know what the charter schools are going to another one coming in two or three years. We don't know on the non-public schools. We must look at it <coughs> annually. So I'll say it this time. So to, to do the study, we did a number of things. We, as Jeff mentioned, we did a housing study to understand what's going to be happening with residential <coughs> development. We developed a demographic <coughs> profile to detail the population estimates right now and what things are going to look like in five years. We studied your enrollment history very carefully. Um, and we looked at birth data to give us some sense of how kindergarten can be projected. And then from all that information, we developed enrollment projections. So we want to start by just kind of giving you a little bit of information about each of those components of the work and the results that we received. So the first thing that we want to talk about is the housing study. You have a wonderful resource with Scott County. Jim and I met with them early on and talked with Brad Davis and his staff who are the, the planning department and work in the area of the GIS or Geographic Information Systems. And we wanted to talk with them about getting data that would allow us to document the residences in the district to, again, be able to make some assumptions about a new development, what implications that might have for enrollment. So uh, Brad and his staff met with us and um, said they would get back to us with a cost, and a couple of days later they called us and said, we want to do this for free, the, di the district is part of our service area, we think this is important information, so um, hats off to Brad Davis and his staff, they were great. Um, we met with the, the cities of Shakopee and Fire Lake and Savage, again, trying to understand what they were looking at in terms of residential development, and then we sent, spent some time with, um, with Jeff and Dave Orlowski just understanding what was kind of happening within your district what was being planned. So from the housing study, we're just gonna share a few pieces of information. So right now, 69% of your students, resident students live in single family homes, followed by 18% that live in townhomes or twin homes. So the, but the vast majority of people live in single family homes. Then just some highlights, the largest number of students live in single family homes that were built between 2000 and 2009 and in homes valued between two and three hundred thousand dollars. So the largest portion of your kids are in those types of homes. 32% um, of the homes of the single family homes in the district have children. So you're thinking about as new construction goes up, only a third of those are gonna have children. And the other piece that we always think is interesting to look at is the, the older population. So in your case, about 20% of the population uh, homeowners are registered voters who are age 55 and older. Sometimes if you're doing referendum planning, it's interesting to look at those um, those categories and just get a sense of you know how many people have, have children and how many are, are older citizens. So that gives us a little bit of information about that. Then the next slide, and you have a handout that I, I just made a copy of to see if you look at it closer. Uh, just showing in, this is the city of Shakopee, what's being planned for current developments you see the map, and then on the left you'll see the, the single-family home developments, the, the townhome and toy home developments, and the apartments that are being planned. So this is what's what's being planned right now in Shakopee. And, and before you leave this, this is the question that I've asked before, and I thought I understood it, but now that I see the clue, Dave, I'm kind of looking at you. On the far right-hand side, uh, it's called the Southbridge Crossings, and then the Southbridge Stagecoach. Are those, in fact, in our district? 
they may be in Shakopee, but are they in our school district? Because I believe we were told before the Shakopee Southbridge Crossing is actually in Burnsville. Believe it or not. It's, it's, it's my understanding they are in your district, but, but I, I will be happy to check on, double check, and get back. Reggie, is that the one? Because I think we talked back by Home Depot. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. I think that we were told, if I'm remembering correctly, because I remember going, oh, there's another development. It actually falls within the Burnsville district. And the stagecoach, I don't know, it's on the same road. And I know if you go a little farther south, it's, it's actually in Savage. Um, that is certainly in our district, but I don't know about this new development. So those two, I think we need to know whether or not they should be in our account or not. Okay. Yeah. Because I know that Valley Fair and some of the new development up there is actually in Burnsville and Savage, not. Well, I specifically remember Southbridge Crossing. That that complex. I feel like I remember that conversation yeah. too. Yeah. So that makes me question the the stagecoach one. But from a count perspective, it's real important that we know this. And I guess I would have thought that would have been part of what you guys would have looked at. We would have looked at the boundaries of the district, not the city. And we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. Then we have another map that gives us that same detail for Car Lake, the developments that are in your district, what's being planned there, single family homes and And then from that, we just break down by attendance area. Now, the, the numbers that you mentioned are, are included in this, so this may be revised a bit based on what we find out. Um, but again, by the attendance, the uh, elementary attendance areas, this is the proposed development numbers of, of the different housing types. One question, and maybe you'll get to it. I apologize if I'm jumping ahead. Is there the ability to, to take not just the aggregate numbers, but also the price point? Some of the apartments are market rate versus some are subsidized, and some, you know, single family are oftentimes you know, more executive type homes versus, is that something that you get into here? There's not much detail about, about apartments, no. It's okay. because of the number of, the, the, the low number of students that come from there. And, and I understand there's a big boom of development that's being planned for apartments. My understanding is the vast majority of those are either studios or uh, one bedroom apartments. Since the market is not for safe for families. It doesn't mean that there aren't going right. to be any, but yeah. No, I, saw, I, I believe in the mayor's here. Um, the Canterbury Commons is going to be more of a, less, less of a family target. And so that's a big number there that might not have the same impact. So thank you for your indulgence. Mike, do I have that correct, Mr. Mayor? The Canterbury's are going to be in phases. And uh, that number, if it's, you know, 598 is about correct. You show your totals on the last page at about 1800. I realize it's a five-year study, so it is including, but many of these projects are are really phased, along with uh, uh, the, the apartments over by Saltbridge as well. Yes, yes, and we take that into account with our yeah. with our thank you. <laughs> I won't let any really leave again. I just I got I'm always a numbers guy. I'm trying to reconcile what I see on this slide with this page. So, for example, under townhomes, you've got 202 and 42. I don't find the 202. Some of those are in our, like, what you're looking this sheet is just shot me. Okay. Some of the, the numbers are aggregate, and I, I thank you for pointing that out. I didn't, I didn't clarify. So that includes both, both communities. So, so then if I was to add this up, and I'm ballparking it just visually at 2100 or something, whatever those three numbers add, that's more of a total number exactly. than the 1808 I sent this, because that's just shot Signal. Yes, yes, Perfect. yes. Perfect. Okay, good, thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. This graph, uh, I'm sorry, but, um, you have a, hand, a copy of this too in your hand. Um, <laughs> this looks at, um, since 1996, the, the enrollment change in your school district, you're right here, the portion of it that's kindergarten enrollment change, and then the purple line shows housing starts. So, just kind of trying to get a sense of, okay, as housing occurs, when do we feel enrollment change? And 
and we would look at this and say there isn't a direct relationship with housing starts and, and enrollment, it kind of the enrollment trails after housing starts. It would be nice if we could uh, add a, uh, add a, a, a bar to that on employment opportunities or employment in the city to kind of see how that very too, but we, uh, we thought that this that this graph clearly portrayed the, the housing starts back in 2000 to 2004 and how they have tailed off since that time. Next, we wanted to give you a bit of information from the demographic profile. So we have software that allows us to define a geographic area and then apply a database to it that includes information from Experian, which is the credit uh, database that most of us are familiar with. It includes information from the IRS, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and basically covers the majority of households in the United States. So it, it gives us history of population um, and some projections. So it, it details the population by age, by gender, by ethnicity, by educational attainment. attainment. Um, so from that, we've got some information to population. The slide looks at how your population is forecast to increase between the 2017 estimates and the 2022 projections. Your population is forecast to, to increase about 7%. <laughs> then we have another slide that details the youth population, the children between the ages of 0 to 19, and the groupings of 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, and 15 to 19. And interestingly, the, the two components that we see increasing are kind of the tail end, the 0 to 4 and 15 to 19, the, the age groups in the middle are kind of holding their own. Is that because that we had that uh, recession babies 07 to 11 were? It's possible. <coughs> and then the next uh, slide looks at the percentage of women in childbearing years. So when we're looking at the female population, we're looking at women between the ages of 18 and 44. We see in 2022 about 39 percent of the women in your district will be a childbearing age. This is slightly higher than the state average. And then the last slide looks at real estate sales. So we see how homes have moved in the light of the five years between 2013 and 2017. On average, 503 single family homes sold and 299 townhomes or twin homes. that's kind of a look at, at some demographics. I wanted to just highlight some of the enrollment history. The first draft looks at just the, uh, this is the fall seat count, the October 1st number of health enrollment exchange, 2007, 2008, through the most current date in 1718. Just a nice general uptick. And then we want to talk about total migration, or grade to grade enrollment change. When we we're predicting enrollment in a district, the best predictor for the fifth grade enrollment is what the enrollment was in the fourth grade the prior year. The best predictor for the eighth grade is what it was in the seventh grade, to take a look at how it has changed in that grade over the years. So my question <coughs> is the change in grade level enrollment for all reasons, for all reasons. You can see in 2012, 2013, the negative numbers are minus six and minus four. Uh, the reds are when, when it went down, and the total at the bottom, the total migration of 111, increase from the prior year, 101, 39, 121, 81, and 58. Now, there's also something that has to be analyzed, and that's how many students are leaving? How large is our grade 12 class and those that are leaving? And what is our entering kindergarten class? So if you add those two together, the change, what's called the natural change in enrollment, grade 12 and kindergarten, to the migration, you get the total enrollment change for a year. And you can see there in grade nine, uh, the district uh, 
uh, receives enrollment from some of the some of the uh, schools that stop at grade eight, and that's always a nice number. In grade eight, you've gone down three years. It's nice to see you went up, even if it's just one student. And grade eleven and twelve will almost always go down in school districts, larger school districts, as students opt for uh, for for other for other choices or to or to leave school. But to understand enrollment projections, you have to understand everything goes into this, everything goes into this matrix. All the factors, those increasing to non-public schools, what is going to charter, the changes in homeschool enrollment. And we have some graphs that show the trends in this data coming up next. Uh, one question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that a PSEO student is considered a shock of these students. Mm -hmm. so that, um, That's what all the Takata students are reflected in here? The what? The uh, Takata? I'm trying to remind you. ALC. ALC? Yes. Okay. Yes. They're, they're rolled in here. Now this is a, a trend in the enrollment options variance. So the black line is how many students have optioned out to other public schools. The red is how many have optioned in. And the variance in those two numbers. Uh, therefore, in the last two years, it stayed quite solid at 510 and 525. We would, in, in, in our software to project the enrollment, we would be using the continuation of that trend. Next is the, the, the trend line of resident students enrolling in charter schools. And charters uh, became the old in 2007-8. Uh, and you can see that in the, in the most recent year, they stayed fairly, fairly stable. And we can uh, even list out one of the uh, reports in, in, in the complete report shows the names of the charter schools at the grade levels where students are going. And most charter schools now are stopping at grade eight. And the old adage is, if you can get a student enrolled kindergarten to grade one and give them a successful experience, they're going to be here for the duration. Uh, that's one of the things we try to do, and I'll, 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 uh, I'll take a little bird walk here. We, we did a study several years ago for Eden Perry, and uh, they uh, were losing a large number of kids, and, uh, and uh, we had a good discussion and said, well, let's, let's initiate a, uh, a uh, Spanish, Spanish immersion school. school or a non-public school, will they have priority? Because we only have so many. So the problems that they thought of not having enrollment were surpassed by the, the challenges they had to find spots for students that wanted to enroll in that alternative. Uh, and uh, charter schools um, are a good alternative for many students. These are residents enrolled in non-public schools, and that's all your residents enrolled in non-public schools. Uh, your district has, um, we have a term we call the capture rate of, of your students. If a student is in shock, your capture rate is 87% of the students in your district go to the public schools in your district, and that compares uh, that compares favorably with Eden Prairie. It, 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 it compares favorably with all the districts around here, except, except Prior, Lake. Prior Lake has a they retain more of their resident students than you do, but you follow right on that. Uh, and, and Burnsville is, is uh, 
as, as the lowest capture rate. Okay, let's go on here. And then the home school of students, uh, it's interesting that it went to uh, 161 and has stayed at that level for uh, 16 and 17. And, uh, these are the these are the items that should have to be monitored on an annual basis to see how they're how they're how they're going. Uh, sorry, can you go back one slide to the? I know that 15 is skipped. These are our residents going to non-public anywhere. It's not just the non that we've got two primary non-public options right. in town here. Right. So this is wherever they're attending. If your residents are in a non-public school, they're included in this. So they're going to Holy Angels. Exactly. Over. Okay. That looks like okay. Right here, it's going to work. It's a pretty big delta between 14 and 16. Dude. Was there a non-public school that closed? Was there something? Is there an event that drove that, or is it just and as we increase on our quality ratings, right? As our school ranks, is that bringing more students back? Or I, I, I don't have a, I don't have a you know, response for that. This is just the data that we have. Okay. So I don't have any thoughts on it. But. Okay. We know what's in. You didn't listen to the question. Is it a step down, or if it's a drop? Of well. Five? We have the data that the district provided to us, but, but they said the, the data wasn't accurate. And the, the data that was reported to your district was like 309 students. And we thought, with 309 yeah. in the middle of this, just. It was incomplete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, okay. something's missing. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for that. So, birth data. So, when we think about kindergarten, we want to think about birth. So, this graph just looks at birth certified your district um, in the gray bars and then the overall red bar is the, the total of those bars. We can when we do uh when we hold the camera we can look at either a person zip code certified the district or sometimes we look at person in the county but you're in a county that has eight other school districts and so it really doesn't make a lot of sense to try and draw any relationships between it, it, a better use for us is to draw a relationship between zip codes and Data, the, the birth data is used to correlate to the beginning kindergarten students five and six years later. It's the best single indicator uh, of that. And the zip codes are typically unique to a school district or municipality. And it isn't the numbers, it's the relationship that is the, uh, that is the factor that we, we look at. And, uh, uh, we've had uh, great success in looking at birth and zip codes in kindergarten in five years. Five years. <laughs> so, now let me understand why 372 and 378 are listed. Is it because, well, tell me what they are. 78 Savage? Yes. Do I know that? Yes. Okay. And 72, I'm guessing, is prior list? Yes. So, are the births that you're showing for that entire zip code or just the portion that fall in No, down? they're for the entire zip code. That's what I code. would assume because we have such yes, a small portion. Yes. That's really interesting that the birth rate is so much higher in this zip code than the other two municipalities. That, and I'm sure that has something to do with the demographics involved, but it's the thing. Wow. Well, I think, again, yeah, your homes, younger parents, I guess. It's a lot of factors, but I'm just surprised yeah. that the gap is that much. It's pretty steady. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all 
all say it's fairly steady, but well, six mm -hmm. eight has dropped, is declining just is with the, what actually it has to in the prior slide, right? You know, it shows that the slope flat. But our our elementary doesn't really start getting the whole where it is now, like 22, 23, right? And we're currently sitting with five elementary buildings. Thank you, sir. You're spinning off. And the, pre <laughs> the previous slide, just to re reiterate what I think I heard before, especially in relation to what the mayor said, this factors in some staggering of the developments. Yes. Right? yes. So you've, you've got some methodology yes. that says, and I'll be built overnight, and I right. be occupied overnight, right. so this projects something. Exactly. But but to your point, that needs to be monitored very carefully sure. now because we're making the best assumptions sure. that we are right now based on how the market looks, how construction looks. It could all change, you know, next week. So it's not this is not a plan that we're giving and saying here you are for five years, but rather we're saying this is where things look right now. And because of the method that we use, that we're always using the history and trending it based on the understanding that we can project the best enrollment by understanding our history. And so we're always moving that base, if you will, kind of resetting the base to reproject enrollment. So before we move farther, because I think recommendations appear to be coming up soon, um, just take a bird walk, I like your term, for a second, and talk to us about your historical accuracy. I'm sure that you've been doing this for a few years, and you've probably gone back and said, well, this is what we said for Eden Prairie, or this is what we said for somebody. Give us a sense of how good you are at this. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you, I don't have specific data about that. Um, okay, you weigh in. Um, for bird walkers. I would be, uh, <laughs> I would be uh, one of the assistant superintendent of Rochester for 25 years, and worked with down there. And uh, I thought we were pretty accurate, but I'll make this comment also. If you miss enrollment <coughs> on the high side, you can face financial catastrophe. If you miss enrollment on the low side, you can face a bit of embarrassment, having to hire some teachers late in the year, having to find a classroom or two that you didn't have. But I'll, I'll take those challenges before I'll take, I've seen districts missed by two, three, four hundred in single years. Uh, and uh, now we're talking about jobs. So I believe that uh, enrollment should be accurate to 2%. That's what I believe. I believe that financial planning in the school district should be valid within 2%. I believe that by January of school year, school districts should know where they're going to end the year for energy. Now, these may be different challenges in different districts, but if you could, uh, I, I believe that our enrollment, and we haven't taken every report that we've done and said, well, we missed the areas. Uh, what we do have is a, is a, a, a system that was designed by Ann and myself and Microsoft Excel that allows us to kick and modify variables last thing I'll say is the moment planning the school district it shouldn't be this man's job, it should be a job that this man coordinates with a group process that allows people to get their feelings in the room. Uh, I'll take another bird book. We did an enrollment uh, study for Clayton County, Georgia, right after Katrina hit. And all of the students that came up from there, and we were sitting around group of 14 of us and the question was this how many of these students are going to return to New Orleans next year you know you sometimes have to use them so we had everybody get their voice in the room say what they felt how they felt then we had everybody put a number down how many would be returning to New Orleans we had 14 we threw out the top five and the bottom five and average the middle three said that's what we're going with <laughs> okay and it was pretty close so uh, so what I'm saying is enrollment planning isn't a science it's far from a science you're looking at all of the variables and trying to use sound judgment uh, 
we were surprised to see uh, in some cases uh, like 0.57 students in a single family home, 0.43 students coming from town homes. So you can do a lot of multiplication and taking a look at that, but you don't end up with an end result of enrollment projections through the housing method. You can just use that to amend it, that, that, and that's what Ann, uh, Ann and I have done in this case. We added a little bit in the high school, added a little bit because we think that a lot of people are sitting out in these homes that uh, have children but don't have siblings in school yet. And you have to have a, uh, an enrollment planning process that when a student enrolls in the school, you're also grabbing the siblings and getting their ages down so that we can, on an annual basis, do the best job that we can of predicting kindergarten enrollment from real data and not from zip codes. Wow. So I, <laughs> huh? Well, thank you for, for saying that, and I, I agree it takes a lot of voices, and we're very lucky to think that we have two people in the room, uh, in Sarah, and in Scott McQueen, who have been involved in faculty enrollment for, <laughs> what would you say, 20 years at least, 18? We're not coming. We're not coming. Okay. <laughs> not that high. Well, we watched it grow. Yeah. Is, that I would just ask, you know, Reggie asked them how good they are. Uh, from where you guys are, I know you weren't involved in, in detail in this study. Is this tracking with what you would expect, Sarah, Scott? Yeah. I'm not asking for a detailed opinion. Is this? Well, I, you know, it's been a quiet period. They're building houses. So you need to be building houses to have these numbers go more robust. So the, the big factor is what's next is you know, your horn goes up over the hill. That hasn't happened yet. It feels to me like a conservative prediction that we need to watch. And I agree with every condition you have to watch it every, every year because as things go to the hill, things ain't go fast. Um, I have a couple questions too because I remember the last big study and then you made an adjustment. But um, I was looking over your population estimates and I don't know how that factored into, but. <clears throat> In 2010, you said our population was 42 poor. <clears throat> Just in April of this year, the Met Council put out our uh, population at 41.5. So I think that your 2017 estimate of 47.7 is short. It seems too high to me. But then you have to also remember that this is, this is the district. This is the geographic district. So this is just not That's fine. the city of Shockley. This okay. also includes. And then I, my other question is for when you track uh, housing starts or housing built to enrollment, I see that both enrollment appears to be sliding down as our housing growth goes down, or housing starts. So I didn't see a correlation with with housing starts or enrollment. Um, if one exists, we couldn't find it. Well, no, our housing starts have been down. Yeah, I, all I'm saying is a correlation that you that you yep. described. If if you can find a correlation from that one graph of housing starts and the resulting enrollment, uh, we couldn't find it. Okay. Uh, but we still think it's important to document the trends. No, and I appreciate that. Yeah. My other question was about, and I agree with uh, um, Reggie and the, the gap on the birth rates, because that's a real starting point. Then you can count out five or six years, right? Um, from, excuse me, get back on. Um, by birth, <laughs> just seemed like we were way ahead of other zip codes, but then I didn't see the correlation in an expansion of enrollment down the line. Um, and maybe I am looking at it wrong. So I'm actually on page 15, where 15 and 14, where you talked about the big gaps in birth by zip code, in our zip code, but yet your K enrollment appears pretty steady. 
but ticking up a little. We, Even though we seem to be a pretty high um, burst by zip code. So I see steady K, because I would go, boy, if we had an influx of bursts in zip code, I would count out five or six years ago, boy, I got a K going, right? That's a K start to me. At least 87% of them. 87% of them? Yeah. So I look and then I went, wow, the, the three to five enrollment still continues to climb a little bit. It would tell me we have actually more migration, not by housing start, but just mid-migration of folks just coming to town already with a family. And then for some reason there's some stagnation on grades five through eight, and then all of a sudden they're back up in high school, right? So I, I'm trying to figure out why I would do that. Well, well, no, a lot of it is just is it's just advancing, aging the, the the population of the enrollment forward each year, and then we're factoring into a little bit thinking about the anticipated population growth in in the zero four and the fifteen to nineteen age group. So. And maybe families come in when they already have a, a young family come into the district and then they come and wait five or six or seven years and then maybe they move out of the district for various reasons as well. It just seems that graph kind of goes K and then rises for the elementary and then back down a little bit for for the mid and then back up. Okay. Trying to understand, thank you. The only thing I would add to that something you mentioned also and then Scott mentioned with the housing there is there is a lag you know as the new homes go up there is a lag for enrollment so even if there's I'm throwing out a number 200 homes single family <coughs> homes if there often is a lag time before yes. those children arrive at school well you've got the makeup of a, of a good group <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. And I say that people people like to study enrollment, and uh, we used to convene after the enrollment we realized and go around the table and say, "Well, I'm right on this year. How do you do?" So I think we look forward to Jeff doing that in October. Just one more comment. One more thought about how effective how good our we we are. Um, Many of the studies that we do are repeat performances. So the fact that I think we've been, we just finished completing the last three years, we've done two for all now. Yeah, so I mean, I think, you know. I, so Either they like the, re, the, the results or just want to see us again. <laughs> Shame on me for not doing this because I, I meant to, I just didn't get around to doing it with some other competing factors. But I was going to go back and look at Hazel's report. Visual, visually. And I can't remember exactly what year it stopped, but what I distinctly remember was the graph looking very similar to this, and it kind of plateaued with a slight tick, you know, up. So I'm going to be very surprised when I do pull that because I know I have it to look at it. And maybe your number's not precisely the same, but the shape of your curve I think is the same. And so I'm, I guess I'm encouraged by that that, that something done a while ago refreshed and then done again is still showing the same thing. And I would prefer to be conservative because years ago that wasn't the case and we actually gave direction to be more conservative because that ended up hurting us um, and we learned a lesson on that that's part of a whole other story but we know to be conservative on enrollment i've read about that <laughs> yeah not, not this particular thing has been mischaracterized greatly this is a particular instance of one year recommendations yes okay uh, <clears throat> recommendations are uh, for example, we've talked about it already here, um, requires annual monitoring. We know that future enrollments are positively and negatively affected by cash births, reductions or growth in private school and charter school, housing turnover, increased in enrollment, transportation options for residents uh, that want to move to this school district, and in this area and contribute to the cities for open enrollment of residents to other districts and charter schools. Uh, I say the district should have a, continue to use some type of group process and uh, 
we will be leaving uh, uh, Jeff with a quite a sophisticated, in fact, it's the most sophisticated enrollment projection model that I believe has been developed that can be tweaked and adjusted and, and looked at. Uh, we've had the privilege to work with Jeff for uh, for a number of years, uh, both uh, St. Louis was part of that first spot in the farming county and later. So, so we've talked about these. Uh, and that concludes the recommendations in this report. But uh, you've had a chance to add, add some questions. Now, I have included another uh, another page, and I hope you'll have, This is the Anna In addition to projecting moments, you've heard you say when I was in the audience, I like numbers. I like numbers too. I, I do a lot with numbers, and I work with a gentleman that retired from the Department of Education um, on, on numbers, and I've, I've written a short paper here on MCA test scores, which is a, which is a favorite topic of mine. But I decided to take a look at the uh, Shockley School District, and what I came up with was a bit surprising. And it is presented on this, this called a scatter plot. And this scatter plot presents a dot for every public school in the state of Minnesota. There are 1,694. The MCA scores, we then correlated these scores to 15 different variables, um, grade level, ethnicity, so that we can take a look at, a, at the demographic makeup of a school district or a school district or a school and tell you what percentage of your students are predicted to score at levels three and levels four, the two highest level of the MCA test scores. And then we can get your scores and compare how the students scored versus how they were predicted to score. So on this scatter plot, every one of your schools was above the line for your alternative schools, the one way down to the red one, but all of your others scored higher than they were projected to score. So uh, I, uh, I follow uh, most school districts in the state, but I follow uh, Shakopee because I live in the area where we get all of the news on Shakopee. And uh, you people have had a very challenging time in the last, in the last couple of years. And I, uh, I believe I even called uh, Scott one time. I, you, may not, you may not remember it, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I am so pleased to say that you are doing well and somebody in the instructional division of the school district should be soundly committed. And this is wonderful news that you should be trumpeting to everyone, you know, that this is wonderful. So let's do some good things. When the school, when the students arrive, they're getting a good education. They're getting better than the average in, in the state of Minnesota because the average is sitting right there. And I have all of the data to back this up. So just having an opportunity to visit with you, so now that I can put faces on articles in the paper, so, thank you for your time. I hope you satisfied with our Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure to digest and yeah, contemplate the actual stuff. I very much enjoyed reading it completely thoroughly. I do have a request, and that is, in light of that prior discussion around those two yes. developments, I would request <laughs> that when you go back, if in fact you find those um, are not, and thus they would change the results, I'd like to get a complete version of the report. It's not going to change everything. It doesn't change parts and all that. But I'd like to have a final version and a complete version with whatever that changes from the recommendations. You can follow that in the chat. And, and one of those developments we're talking about are apartments. Yes. So that will, I would say that will very negligibly change yeah. any results. For them. The only implication is for the other development of the 59 school. Right. And it's yes. a smaller number. Too. Yes. But, but I would I'd like to have a report that would your comfortable is fully accurate and represents the final fund. And that you can look at three years from now and say, Oh, yeah, that's when we'll ask you back, right? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. Who's presenting 3.3? 3. Mr. McQueen. Bye now. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know, right? Hi. I was wondering why you're still here. Good to see you. 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 Good to as I think they said in the presentation, it hasn't been a while since we've had projections. Mm -hmm. We now have some projections, which always give clarity to something. I think that what you should expect and what you should expect. At least from the point of view. Uh, but the, the uh, companion to projection at the moment is how, to, how we organize, how we housing our population. Gary's intent is to uh, talk about creating a task force to look at stuff again. We have a school that's going to be vacant. We have a you know, central, which has been talked about in a lot of different venues, a lot of different times, different uses. Uh, you do have this facility, which you lease. You have Takata, which you lease, and all of those facilities, assets, expenses, that have property costs, and such. I think you know, Gary's intent would be to look at that whole mix and you know, the projections that we're not too sure to understand. Are there facility things that you would consider? Nothing else to test that you're doing the best you can? I think it's that kind of process. He and I have not talked in any detail about the time timelines other than about this is a task for this year. Uh, I don't know, Sarah was going to look up leases, but I know that I think it's a year from now. Come into discussion, get some meetings. Yeah, that means notice periods are sooner than that, which means at least a, you know, a gut check on those decisions. I talk about size in your timelines. I think the thought is to be first first quarter of the year school year. Something started. The talk is right. we might come back the second half of uh, this month yes. with a more formalized proposal. Yes. yes. So this is kind of an introductory Correct. conversation of getting it on the radar and yeah, getting on your radar and getting any feedback. Yeah. I guess we've seen a few different models in many of us for 2010 with that task force, yeah. right? Where that was, that had the board's facilities committee embedded in it. Mm -hmm. Then in 2014, after the federal referendum, reconvened with the board not being part of, there were no board members who actually fully participated. We were, right. we were resources in the mall, but not. Right. So, I mean, I, we've, right there, we've seen different models for that. Do you have and that had hundreds of people. That was anyone who, who showed up. We, we welcome. Right. Uh, you know, again, we have Gary and I have not talked about that level of detail. Um, you know, it was. I think you were at a different moment when you were yeah. in the shadow of the field proposal, and there were a lot of voices that wanted to come to the table. I'm not sure you have that level of interest. Right. I think there's always a balance of. Internal and external, it's always good to have some external voices. I can't imagine you need to meet hundreds of people for it. And this is as well, too, from, you know, this is a retreat topic that we know we need to explore at the end of the meeting. So it's, I think nobody's surprised that we're at this point and we need to do it again. The thing I would want to know as clearly as we can define is scope. Because if you, you know, right, exactly, because that would determine not just the makeup, the structure, the format, but you know, did you need hundreds of people? No, yeah. probably not, especially depending on the scope. So 
I would ask that the thought go into that and whatever recommendations you brought back. Um, that's all the things you talked about, maybe more or less. It's what are we really trying to bite off? What do you need answers on? Exactly. For prognostication. Exactly. Yeah, because this is, this is talk about needing new space, it's how do we use the assets we have now, so it's not the end all is a vote for, for building revenue, right? so it's a whole That's why I'm saying, what's, what's the question, what's the scope, what's in play, what's out of play, because that would go a long ways toward defining how successful this group would be. But you've done this, you've done it with you, so that's right. not so. Right. Do you have a recommendation for us, or do you want to <coughs> no. talk with Gary on that and come back? No, I'm, Gary was supposed to be here presenting, and I don't think he had a structured recommendation at this point. He was, when he was bringing the topic forward, building on your previous maybe discussion about the previous yeah. workshops. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. knowing that there's probably is a proposal coming, it's good feedback on considerations. Yeah, and you know, another factor that I think we ought to acknowledge is we do have an election coming. So I'd like to think through this timing on this too because it gets too not too far down the path. But what is the timing that's that's contemplated for recognizing that change, starting it yeah. and completing it? Because yeah, if you have you know four horses change midstream, not that they are making decisions, but they're going to be ultimately using the information. So I I want that factored in as well. Okay. Just to create yeah. I was just going to just information. On your agenda map, which I think that, that updated document is, you see it. That was one of the was, items for this year as well, well right? Yeah. We had discussed that one. Actually, the word is implemented by finding it. No, yeah, create. 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 So, but I guess what I'm getting at is if it's the calendar year, or excuse me, if it's the school year, is there a rationale to be made for delaying it until January? Perhaps. I'm not, I'm not arguing one way or the other. Yeah. Let's, let's just think that through. Yeah, that's what we're thinking about. Yeah. Maybe you can kind of get it in place, at least the external parties identify so you're not having to plow that or I don't know. Uh, what, and what are the, emerging, the drivers of emergency leases expiring and balancing? Well, those are the drivers. Right. right, well, that's true, too. Those yeah. are the drivers. We've got, we got two elementary there's over capacity, <laughs> some that have capacity. Yeah. What's our urgency to address the year? Does it have to be done by spring? And what, you know, what, what's the right time that's there? So all those discoveries, which is quite the first thing I said, what are we trying to do with this thing? Yeah. Oh, we're trying to do everything. <laughs> of course. <laughs> do anything we can do. <laughs> well, you're trying to be fine. Sure. You're yeah. trying to be ahead of a variety of topics. Yeah. So, as always, we're trying to some have timelines on them, so we can carry on and talk about that. Input? Over here. Feel free to reach out. We don't want to find you. Yeah, we'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you. You're going to hang out for the rest of the No, I think that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Okay, 3.4.
through a retreat with all of the leadership uh, principals and cabinets around kind of equity lens, equity journey, what does that mean individually? He shared a, um, thank you, he shared um, his own equity lens and how he got there. And really the best way to explain kind of what an equity lens is, how did you end up where you're at today to explain who you are and what you believe and what your core values are? And so before we can engage in this equity, we really have to understand where we land in our own privilege and our own space and where we're at. So um, so Gary asked all of us to really engage in this equity journey with him um, together and look to me to kind of work through with, with the equity team as well as all the leadership to really figure out where, where do we want to go, what makes sense, and how do we at the end of the day make sure that all students have um, the best outcomes that they can get coming in. So what you see here today is, um, and I won't read it word for word, but I do want to read the first paragraph. I see a visual on top and that we'll talk about on the back. But I really want to highlight that um, Shakti Public Schools is committed to raising the achievement of all students while narrowing the gaps between the lowest and highest performing students and eliminating the racial or cultural predictability and disproportionality of which student groups occupy the highest and lowest achievement categories, including rates of graduation. And by committing to this, we are ensuring educational equity for all students. And so with kind of starting this visioning process, we have to start somewhere. And then we have to bring teams, and we need to bring leaders in, and we need to bring the school board in to really figure out, does this make sense? Does this land where everybody can make sure? So we want to look to the Department of Ed, the Minnesota Department of Ed, and see what, they, what their views are on educational equity are. And when you um, I basically looked, and this is the next paragraph, paragraph two really talks about how the Department of Ed, Minnesota Department of Ed, identifies um, and defines educational equity. And so I think it would be, it would not make sense for us to try to create a different definition just to keep things, if, if the Department of Ed really believes that this is their definition, you can Google and find a ton of different um, definitions around educational equity. So um, I think Shakopee here has to come up with their own kind of vision statement, and that's what you see in that first paragraph, just the start of it, um, but really aligning it to what the Department of Ed's. So if you turn the page over, um, the, the, the Minnesota Department also identifies 10 commitments to, to equity, and those are listed, prioritize closing the gaps, start from within, measure what matters, go local, follow the money, start early, engage more deeply, value people, improve conditions for learning, and give student options. One of the things that we must do is figure out how can we align the work that we have and who Shaka B is to those commitments. How, what does it mean when we say, um, go local. What does it mean when we say value people? What, what does that look like just for Shakopee? Um, so one of the first steps in this work is really having a common understanding that equity is not a standalone framework. It's not something separate. It's not something we bring to people. Rather, it's something that's directly intertwined with our academics for all students, with our social emotional um, development and engagement for all students. It's something that we actually, and that's where you look in the front, that visual, um, I, Graphic design is not my expertise, so I'm just going to put that out there and then work with the communications department to come up with something. But you'll see kind of equity really is the center of everything that we do. That's the why of everything that we do, so that we make sure that all students, no matter how they enter in, have access and opportunity to be successful. Um, and and if, if you look at the bottom of the graphics, you see literacy, math, climate, which includes behavior and attendance, and graduation. And so we have to start looking more deeply at, at the data in there and the disproportionality that does exist. Um, and so that's part of the work. So I'll, I'll flip you to the back side and you stop me when you want. Um, and so um, one of the things that we have to do is, and we have not done yet because this is the start of it, is create an actionable plan that moves us toward a collective accountability, both individually and as an organization. Um, and really moving away from kind of that random acts of equity to a focused and prioritized effort to create change. Um, and this begins, as I said, to our commitments um, to equity from our own equity lens. Um, as we make equity a priority for our district, we must commit to these things. Um, equity as a core value. Equity is formalized into the strategic plan for our district. Um, that the infrastructure will sustain that commitment to equity that the professional development will be, will be provided to all staff to prepare them for equity work ingrained in academic and social emotional engagement, uh, that data analysis will include collection, reporting, and collaborating to identify where disproportionality exists, um, and when faced with resistance to equity, will remain aligned to that that is a core value of Shakopee. And so although this journey sometimes can be uncomfortable for, for many people, 
it's it's something we believe in and we're going to go through this journey together no matter where we enter in um, and so when you think about all of this it really does align with the pillars that um, the, the, the as a district that we identify as one of the pillars which is a, um, a commitment for excellence with equity and that pillar talks about that we're going to move forward in building capacity of leadership staff students families and community members to develop a raised awareness to engage inspire and communicate on issues with excellence um, of equity and so again this is just the very beginning work of of equity in the visioning process one of the things that i did that i've done is um in my short time here is i did a survey with all the leaders in the district which include um, cabinet level it include um, principals and it include aps to really look talk about the work that equity has looked like in the past few years um, what went well, what hasn't gone well, what do they believe their, where their fund sits, whether it's a high school, whether it's the elementary, whether it's CFC, where, what, what do they need based on the students that they serve? Um, looked at cabinet, what do you see as you need? Um, and what do we need as a district? Then I asked each survey, um, I asked to prioritize what are the top two need, or top two areas that we should focus on, because again, we have to go slow to go fast, so we can't we can't focus on everything. We have to figure out what are the what are the top two things that we'll focus on this year. What is it going to look like in year two and year three? Kind of build this together, um, because sometimes, and what I found is, if you go too fast and people don't understand your purpose and your why, you don't align data to it, then there's a sense of fear of engaging this, and there's a sense of feeling like I did something wrong, or what what am I to be blamed for, and how am I not showing up equitably, like. I show up here, I treat everybody the same, but it's really looking at those biases that people are aware of and are not aware of, and having that guide kind of the work that we do. Um, so, so that kind of that survey I did, I also did the same survey with the equity team that has been here for the past three years with a couple people moving in and out and kind of got their lens and their perspective because it's a very small team thinking of the capacity of the work that has to be done. And so I wanted to, um, one of my goals is to bring both visions of leadership and equity team into kind of one plan that makes sense and then and actually makes people successful in their position rather than overcapacitated or unable to do the work or not understanding what the, the kind of focus for the work is. Um, That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> this is probably a loaded question. Um, what do you see uh, are the risks of us not investing in this The risk of us not, well, as I sat and listened to the kind of that moment, everybody's talking about equity. Um, we, knowing that we're a racially uh, identified isolated district where we are serving more students with diverse, that if we do not engage in this, we're gonna see more kids dropping out because they're not get connecting with their schools, they're not feeling a part of the schools, their voices aren't being heard. We risk, um, biases coming out and some kids being treated one way and some kids being treated another way, um, which then again leads to this, the, the value of school and the, the stories that we hear kids don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. I don't see anybody that looks like me. I don't, I don't have anybody that understands me. And so I think um, the biggest risk is that we're, we're not connecting with kids. Um, kids don't connect Kids don't learn from people they don't connect with. They have a hard time. You have to build a relationship. And equity, really, the, the core sense of equity is relationships and understanding who's coming into your classroom and how do I connect with you? How do I bring my personal story and connect with yours by keeping the boundaries really clear and professional? Does, it, does that answer that a little bit? Oh, yeah, that's good. It, it, there wasn't any right or wrong answer for you. Okay. For me, it's, this is important work. It's extremely important. It's important I, I mean, not to do it. So it was, I yep. just was interested to see. Yeah, and, and for the district that I came from, equity wasn't separate. That it, it, it's, this is really just who I've been as an educator for 22 years. This is what I've done. And my journey from when I started in as a, as a young kid moving in to where I ended leaving that district coming here, I'm a different person. And every year I, I grow in my equity journey and I learn more about myself and how my actions impact the others around me. Yep. Other questions, thoughts? So I have two thoughts. Um, I'm one of the ones who is going to be around for a while, so you're going to uh, have me to bounce back and forth with this uh, for a few years. I, I, I don't want to say I struggle with this topic, but I struggle with this topic. Okay. Um, one of the things that you will hear from me, and Dave's going to know probably where I'm going with this, 
especially as it relates to equity, because we have invested in this, and I don't know if we've gotten full or for it or from it. So I'm very much hoping and expecting that you, as the leader of this group, is going to be able to identify goals, measurable goals, and then tell us how we're performing on those. Because if you can't identify what we're trying to accomplish and measure it, then we don't know if we're having any success. And should we continue doing that or do something different? So I, in this particular area in particular, has been, in my opinion, one that has been lacking that. So I'm going to look for that. When I read this, it reads really nice, and it's kind of hard to disagree with anything, with one exception. And I don't think I disagree, but I, I want to make sure I understand your number six. Because My number six is the one facing the system. Yeah, yeah, because the way I heard it, or I want to be careful, I'm not okay. misinterpreting yep. it. It sounds like, well, you know, you can't argue with this. It's just any resistance we get, we're going to just plow in right through it. There can be difference of opinion. There can be difference of understanding. There can be difference of objective and yep. resource allocation, et cetera. So as long as it's not saying that, then we're fine. But I want to make sure that it's not meaning that. So like, well, this is a fait accompli. We're just going to do whatever no, we, I think, we need to. I think with that, that line is equity work is hard. And having these conversations and knowing where everybody comes in and enters in is a really tough spot. And it's, it's personal. And it's, it's um, and so what I what, what I meant in that statement, or what I, I'm really getting to, is that these conversations are going they can lead to uncomfort, uncomfortability. They can lead to push pull conversations. And in the end, if we truly believe that equity is the outcome for all students, right? That all students have access and, and accountability and and have positive act. And that's equity. If we keep that as a core value during conversations, then anything I think can be kind of talked about and worked out so that it makes sense for everybody. And it's not gonna be that my way or our team's way is the way, this is a partnership. So that at the end of the day, when we're all sitting around having these conversations about equity and the data, that we can remember in the times of real, it, it's really, it goes back to that courageous conversation that people can have opinions and we're gonna struggle through that to figure out what makes sense for Shakti. And that if we all believe that a core value is equity, then we're gonna be okay. Does that, does that make sense? I don't disagree with anything you said. I'm just trying to <clears throat> apply it to that particular sentence. And that's that's going to play itself out. Right, absolutely, time. absolutely. And then the thing about equity, you talked about goals um, and, and having that look to me to be that the, if, if we're doing this right, we're going to see the the disproportionality and the, the, the achievement gap lesson. We're going to see higher, we're going to see a higher graduation rate. Those are the things, you're not going to see that Person A is going to be doing X, Y, and Z, and Person B. We're going to see that that programs that are implemented are touching kids and, and encouraging kids and giving access to kids are going to lead to better outcomes for all kids, not just for our white kids. And so we're going to start to see that's where the goals, that's where the data, and that's where it says looking at the data analysis will include collection, which which data are we going to collect, um, who are we going to report it to, and then the analysis and the collaboration to how do we work towards that. And so that's where I see as the big goal. Our goal will be continuously growing if we see that outcomes for our students here in Shakti are better than they were even three years ago, five years ago. We're going to see that trend going upward. That's what we all want to occur. Right. But it needs to be, there needs to be a correlation. This is what we did and this was the outcome. And it can't be, it must be prospective too. It can't be retroactive. It can't right. be Oh, gee, look, our graduation went up, so consequently this must have worked. There's got to be more than that. Um, like I said, retrospective analysis. It needs to be prospective in some way. And what I have challenged, not just this group, right. but the various areas, is we've got to identify goals, what, how we can measure them, and then examine how we did and make changes accordingly. So this is just an area that I think that's been lacking. And so I'm hoping that we're going yeah. to be. And I, think, I will continue to challenge that. And I see this year, too, is a year of really analyzing kind of what Good. programs have been in, really taking a look at all schools, really working. This is truly, it's a partnership between the equity team and each leader that, that is in that school building. Because this, we can bring whatever it is, but if it's not partnered and if the belief right. is not there, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end with our, with our team. Yeah. And so I think Gary is, is really from what in my short time of year has really set the stage that equity is a priority for him. Therefore, it's a priority for our district. And so how do we move forward to helping all staff that walk through the doors as employees 
no matter what position you're in, understand that equity is something that we're going to prioritize and, and work towards and understanding it's a journey and that everybody's going to be entering a different spot. Thanks for your question. And I look forward to many years of working with you for how this works. Oh, only that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, even after, it's, it's, it's a relative term. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions, other thoughts, recommendations, feedback? I think it looks great. Great, thank you. I think this will be a well built and it will help maps you put it to aligns very well with the state plan. Mm -hmm. So our the state got one and that's user planners. I'm sorry for you. No. Um I'll be contacting you in the next okay. day or so. I'm the board representative mm -hmm. for the equity committee. Oh wonderful. Okay. Committee okay. and I'd like to find out more about yes. what that means because so far I don't come in. So yeah, let me thank you, Reggie. Let me let me answer this. So one yeah. of the things that I don't know what it is. Yep, one of the things that Gary has asked me to do is create a committee so that we have actually multiple voices at the table yeah. talking just about this. Um, I put that out in the survey too. Everyone's like, what committee? I've, um, I put that out in the survey too because there's a couple ways you can do committees. Now you can do one that's E all the way to um, high school and ALC and if you want to go all further so we're touching all families of Shakti is into our T plus program or transition plus program. Um, that can get to be a to be a very large committee when you talk about teachers and paras and any employee that really wants to come in and representation from all grade levels and every voice is being heard. So that was one option. I put another option out for survey um, people that were wanted is doing a committee at the E5, 6, 8, 9, 12 slash ALC, T plus. Um, and then I put another option of E8 and 9, 12. Um, and so right now what we're looking at based on just survey results without I haven't even shared the survey results with Gary is that there looks to be from both leadership ends as well as the equity team that they would like to have a E5, a 6-8 or a 6-12 ALC. So that we're making sure that we're getting voices that we're looking at. I mean, because when you get to the, the high school, that, that equity community really should have parents, but also students on that. And you look at the elementary, really getting parents who remember as leaders. And so not to create too big of a, a circle. Um, and do we look at the committee process of year one, or just establishing, that's a goal. We're establishing, we're, we're having monthly, monthly meetings with agendas, with notes that are aligned. Year two is maybe we're gonna add on parents, we're gonna open this up for parents, or you know, kind of coming together. So that might be what you're talking about. Well, actually, I thought it was Mary Romanski's um, role. She did it. And that's what I was told. That no, she was a head one no of those that's, this is completely out of left field. That okay. may be a right thing to do, but superintendent doesn't just get the institute board committee. Yeah, that, we don't have that yet. So we'll, okay. we'll, let's take this offline because I think maybe we'll look at the list and see if you're thinking okay. of something. But, yeah. okay. but I have a question. Yes. Yes. Based off of the last recommendation ending in 12th or A and C? Yep. Can I ask why transition was taken off? No, no, no. It was kept on T plus. Yeah, it was kept on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All of them included ALC T plus. So high school ALC T plus. Okay. Yep, to make sure that we get the gamut of all, all students that identify shop these students. So you haven't reached the conclusion as to the structure that you'd be proposing. It's right. one of those three or some iteration thereof. Yes, and we plan on bringing that to the uh, leadership on August 17th to leadership to, to get some voice and buy-in with, with staff to find out what, what do leaders, principals want, because they're going to have to commit to being part of this these committees, committees and conversations. And then, yep, and then the school board. So this is the start. Yeah. Tonight was just, so it was just a <clears throat> teaser, just like, yeah, look what's coming. Yeah. yeah. Like put together facilities community, we're gonna start the conversation. Not you're assigning people. I think yeah, I think that's a good thing. I'm not we'll take that off on let's not get what's up yet until we have time. Yeah, just yeah, and so maybe that was something separate. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very much. You. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you all. Thank you. All right. Three point five. I'm guessing that's Nancy's. And Dave. And Dave. That is the final draft of district documents. So this is going to be dairy as well? Yes. And we, I think I understand you guys saw these up as well, and they were going to follow up from the uh, board retreat. 
Yeah, I think they've been yeah, discussed it in detail in the board retreat, and then the email has been sorted out. Sure. Okay. And I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or you have further comments. We could say, I don't know if you want to comment on the characteristics. Uh, well, we, are we just going to kind of take them one at a time, Sarah, and then just sure. Or, or, or depending, I don't know which one's going to float up first. So. Um, probably the characteristics, okay. if that works for you. So um, Gary and I met with the high school admin team because um, we've had actually a number of variations on the characteristic that's been on the path uh, for almost a, a year and a half. And um, this is a draft, however, we haven't had a chance to kind of circle back to the high school admin team. And I think that they're going to maybe want us to do um, some changes yet. So I just want to probably emphasize that this is a draft. Main, mainly our discussions with the high school admin team and then we probably want to shop it out to some larger groups within the high school and maybe um, our cabinet and, um, and uh, leadership teams at, uh, across the district is uh, really been around, obviously the top part is the six C's. Everybody's sort of all in the same place that 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 is uh, definitely what we want from terms of the characteristics. There's still some ongoing uh, conversations about the gray section that talks about, in addition, graduates will have the op opportunities to. So like, for example, uh, we have not, um, we were hoping to bring this forward for a vote at the same time we bring forward the new um, updated graduation requirements that reflect the block, the block schedule probably in the one of the late September um, board meetings. So I could still envision this changing a little bit, especially around capstone project and some of the independent study projects. So um, some of the language is maybe not quite what we want yet. Um, so it's kind of still a work in progress, and so I just want you to, to be aware of that. And if you have any feedback on how to improve it, it would be great to get that tonight as well before we circle back to other groups. Yeah, I guess the one piece of feedback I had was what we discussed in the retreat around the, there was a commitment to wordsmith college and career readiness because we agreed that that's not what we want to be saying, that, you know, that, that has the sentiment of, we all have to go to college. Like, you know, I, I just, we, we talked about, I think it's pertains to our vision. Yeah, and, and or, or, yeah. So if we could just be consistent to our other documents. Okay. That would, that would be my yeah. pick up on that. Thank yeah. you. And culturally responsive needs to be parallel with the other <laughs> characteristics, something like cultural responsiveness or something. Because the others are all um, adjectives. So, yeah, I think this one, uh, I'm not even sure the six C's at the time, this, this uh, yeah, it needs more work. I'll just say it that way. I think it actually is different on our instructional framework, so. But overall, from formatting, look and, look and feel, it, it's, it's, it's an direction. exciting thing to look at and to think about and, yeah. you know, look at this and then project it to own kids and step kids, and it's fun to think about. Okay. Yeah, actually to that point, I just looked over at the pillar and we call it cultural competence. The pillar is different than what it says on the instructional framework. So the, um, That's what I'm saying. It seems like we would want to be consistent with whatever we're calling the six C's. Yeah, we need to go to the six C's document. To, that's not the six pillars. I don't want to confuse the two. No, 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 so, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's talking about the <laughs> yeah. six C's though, right? So if that's the six C's and this is the six C's, the second you pillar of the six pillars has the I think we have some seasons. alignment of language yes. issues here. Right. Or, Reggie, right. I think you're, you're pointing it out. I actually think the instructional framework is different than what the pillars and different than what it says there. So I think we need to look across all three documents and make sure it says the same. Agreed. Yeah. 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 So I was just saying there's a third document in there that yeah. I think there's a problem with. Would you like to do? Um, you, want to jump, you want to go to that one? It's the pillars next, as long as you reference that. I thought the wordsmithing on this from, from the retreat was quite good. 
the one thing that I think Sean noted it, or somebody did it, the feedback that bounced around was in the um, culture of excellence, where it, it appears to be cut off. Yes. That's so it just, yeah, it just needs to get caught. Yeah. Or again, there's the, the and or didn't get put in a career and or college, right? Second. I have a, and this is just for discussion, because right? I understood the, you know, some of the logic behind the uh, movement of the words. I will say, I do want to point out that world's best workforce, and I know we talked about this before, um, the Minnesota statute really does want to encourage kids to say, to have it be and. And I, I get, so, and I get yeah. that we had this discussion, and that's great for the small segment of the state that reads that. This is a public document about what we're doing, connecting with our people, our citizens, our students. So while I absolutely respect that viewpoint, I think it's absolutely wrong to, to use that. What MDE does, that's how we communicate our vision to our community. I think we're doing fundamentally two different so let me ask it in a different way too, Matt. And again, I just want us to think it through because we've talked about it off and on over the years is uh, the part of the Sabre plan is part of the conversation we've had around the academy model, et cetera, is that we are trying to encourage both. We are trying to encourage kids to choose post-secondary options and not go straight to work. Um, it, now, when you say college, it doesn't imply that that's automatically a four-year opportunity. It could be a one-year apprenticeship. It could be um, it could be a two-year uh, technical school. It could be a four-year. But I think part of the part of what we've talked about is that both things are important. That career preparedness. It's those soft skills, those six C's, those professional skills that make us ready. But we also know research-wise that it's best for kids to pursue some type of post-secondary training. But that can even include the military. Right. But does it send a message to put the or in there to, to one way or the other? So again, you're using college as this catch-all for something that I don't think many people would say mm -hmm. an apprenticeship is college. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get the definition, right? Something, right. some sort of learning past high school. Right. I don't think most people, I think when they think college, they think four-year school, because what I'm, why I'm so passionate about this is I want kids to go into apprenticeships. I want kids to go into and feel good about it. This, I think, makes people feel like, if I don't go to college and have a career and be on that path, you know, there's a stigma we put on kids. If you don't take this path, then you're failing. And I think that's the wrong message. I think it absolutely is. And that's why I don't like that, that statement, because it's very, I get your definitions. I think that those aren't the definitions yeah, that most people that see. are common to most people. Yeah. So I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be no, right, right, obstinate right, 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 here, but it's, I, I feel passionate about this, and I thought that was resolved in the retreat, that that's the way we're going to go forward. So I'm a little frustrated that it's still in that connotation. I, I think that is a thorny issue with the public. Mm -hmm. I hear it again and again. But the importance of and is from the research we talked about earlier, saying that to start a career the day after you graduate, you need the same skills as a kid who's going to be a freshman. Oh, absolutely. Someplace. And I, um, I know you don't want these things to get too fussy, but I wonder if we shouldn't, um, just as a teachable moment for everybody, is to somewhere cite the study that says, so explain what we mean when we say college and career ready. According to, isn't it an ACT study? Mm -hmm. Research? It, yeah, I mean, it's a variety of places, okay. but okay. yeah. yeah. So to say, according to this research, this means, it, it, because we keep coming up against it again and again. I get it, I, and I, and I hardly, think and I like and, I'm not saying and is a bad thing, I like and or, I like something that's more inclusive. I do think, well, citing the study is a great idea. I really do. In a vision statement, a vision statement needs to be a phrase. It has to be as short as possible. It has to be succinct. So that's where it's hard to I say. Go look saying. it up. I get what you're saying. But I, I mean, I love, I love all this. I love, I love putting kids in positions to be successful. I just don't like the branding to be pushing us to one path only. Because I don't think that's what it's intended. But I think. And that's I don't how think that's what we're trying to do. No, I don't think right. we are. Yeah. 
But my, my point being, I think most people look at that and say, oh, you're either going to start a career or you're going to go to a four-year school. And, and we're trying to say, the world's at your feet. right? You can do anything. And, and I just don't want our, our words to mislabel, because you're right, that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah. Well, I think this one needs to keep work, keep working on it. <laughs> very close, though. It's moving forward very well. It's a work of art. Anything on the organizational charts? I just actually on the, one question back on the 21st century learning is technology originally a single word? That's the word. No, that I've taught before too. Yeah, yeah. That should be a hyphen. Oh, that's one of those picky things. Maybe it's a fancy new one. That <laughs> <laughs> was probably circulated amongst the board. But Oh, you maybe. I bet you did, but that's so, probably true. Oh, okay. yeah. Some of it we have not seen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, <laughs> <know>. <laughs> 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 you have maybe seen it more than us. <laughs> so we're, we're striking the word technology rich? No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah. So this next one is an, an org chart that I think Gary developed based on a request from, from you to kind of look at flow mm -hmm. for the district office. And, and so um, this, is, this is it. So. Yeah, there's a lot going on and a lot of lines going right to Gary. Mm -hmm. Good news, there's a lot of good people in those boxes. So that's, that's been a control issue that we should resources being otherwise we would address. Right. Yeah. And I, I guess my only question, and this is board specific, is should we have an other committee kind of, I mean, as we talk, as communities, uh, committees or task forces come and go, are those our four always standing, and our finance and personnel will always be there. Policy will always be there. We've always had three. Recent one. Yeah. Recent one. yeah. Uh, well, then arguably, you can see back in there that's an offshoot of finance. No. Yeah, that's no. not a, that's not important. Um, yeah, you can't yes. get wrapped around the actual stuff. You, you update it if you formally. We just talked about one that was a surprise. If that's a formal new committee, it needs to go on there. But yeah. I don't know if it is. No, it's not. And I don't. We still have groups like district advisory council. Right, we don't have to put everything on here. That's not the idea. Yeah. And I have your clear. Otherwise, it looks good. I'm kind of a little bit surprised that the theater manager will report it through facilities and activities. I thought that would be a, a tie into that they would actually do more partners than a direct reporting relationship. But that was in some other document, so this wasn't the first time I saw it, but I, I don't remember having a conversation about it. So I thought Gary was here, we could obviously speak to it or for me to speak to it, but it wasn't the first time I saw it. So, because if, yeah, there's, yeah. That role needs to bring in a certain amount of money, and I, I can't, I don't want to see that being delegated down to that person. That's not part of the role. We can address that offline. Yeah. I'll do it offline. No, just this um, facilities area. I think we need smaller font overall on this. It's too big. Right? To read. <laughs> Well, here's one thing. I'm wrong. We used to have four years. No, we didn't. You said three. Now, that's not a reason to get bigger font, but uh, <laughs> I'm just surprised that we have four. No, but it, 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 it is a new. And we have three. We've kind of been purposeful with the three. I know. To that's say, why. yeah. I'm not sure. And frankly, if you get that far out, you're being awfully repetitive anyway. So I'm. Can you scroll? Never right? occurred to me, but if Gary was here, I would say, why are we doing four years? Is yeah, that's, I'm kind of wondering, is there, was there a specific incident or event that we're looking forward to in that specific? When we ran the exercise, did we have the fourth year on that? I can't remember. I don't know if we did. I think we, I think my table didn't get past the first year. I mean, we, we had a lot going on. Did we even take off one comment? Yes, that was the second year. Yeah, that was the second year. Yeah, we had 17, 18 that was already done. Right, so we said get rid of that one, and then I think we did have well, I think what it was is we had the last version, and that included what was then the current year. Right. I'm just, I don't, I don't have a problem with it being in there because I, the font's okay with me, but I just don't know what we're really gaining by having a fourth year out there that's truly that different than the prior year. And it, this is intended to be an annual event, 
an annual thing to update. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what we gain by having a fourth year. So again, work area here, I would say, what are we gaining by 21, 22 at this point? Well, and to that point, some of those things are one third policy review every year, right? Because that's this that's document the, was that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. It's repetitive. Yes. I don't think we gain anything. The only well, thing that it looks like is different is that we value the need for land acquisition. Yeah. All the other ones look like they're repeating. I remember talking about that saying that wasn't anything we had to do anytime soon, so it could be that, that yeah. he might have just said, let's not take it off the radar. It's got to stay on somewhere. So, and that is kind of something. Yeah, frankly, if it's that important, mm -hmm. and I hadn't thought about this, you can drop it back into 2021 and begin yeah. uh, or assess needs for whatever, so it's not like they could lose it. We do that and get rid of that. I think we should, yeah, I would agree with that because that is I doesn't sound like it's meaningful. I don't know, like a three or four, three year horizon. Otherwise, it's very content. Yeah, this reflects, um, again, a lot of good stuff that we did at that event. I did notice a start of, and I, I wonder if it was happenstance or is this truly. There's X's in a few of these, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So those are supposed to represent those that have been done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, one of our, one of my requests anyway was that we kept this current. So then, sure. at some point as we go through the yeah. year, we should be, you know, V two, V three, V four. I got to. Yeah. And the other thing I think we've done previously that we didn't get to it in this retreat is if something had a committee that it needed to run through, like okay, the policies. You know, one third policy would go to the Again, we don't know. In this 50,000 review, I don't know that we need to get that specific. Yeah, but that's there, something we've done some in the past. There is a version of this that has that, exactly to your point. Um, but it gets back to size and content of this, you know, it's, it's just overwhelming to some degree. It does, yeah. It, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> but that does exist. And you didn't have to write it in my next <laughs> The content that was very good. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's all we got. Thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We don't have any other, do we? No others? Okay, in that case, number five, upcoming meetings and important dates. Uh, board filing period. So we have 24 hours, less than 24 hours. Less than. Uh, to file for the school board. And we've got Bach on Wednesday night. So you can read the calendar there. After the big date, I think it's the 28th. That's going to be a significant day. So that's open to the entire community, correct? Mm -hmm. And five o'clock is the formal event. But there's formal events event. earlier in the day. Absolutely. Um, there's two, there are building wide tours for the community on the half hour, starting at two. At two. Okay. Uh, really the the fund hour. starts at 2 for us. I'm sorry? The fund really starts at about yeah. 2. Yeah, the student um, ambassadors will be running the, the building-wide tours okay. on the half hour starting at 2. <laughs> All right. I do just want to point out, the yeah. general public, it, yep. this came in the mail, should be finding it in the mail. Bob handed those to me and put out for us. Yeah, they're sitting there. Delivered by the 16th. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, what? We'll be in the look all right, then we got our 18 board meeting dates, and then the 1819 school colors are already attached. Uh, let's go around the horn quick. Matt, you got anything? Uh, yeah, it was, and I should have said this when our builders wrapped and our architects were here. I was in a business meeting in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and a partner in my firm was, was saying he'd just been in the best. Um, high school sporting facility he'd ever been to in his life for the Under Armour tournament, and he was in the field house at Shockby High School. So hearing recognition from out of state and completely caught me off guard. Uh, but it was just fantastic to hear his brag about what a you know what his pleasure it was, what you know, wonderful facility it was to be part of. So it's great to hear that. Um, if you care to watch baseball, state amateur baseball actually speaking of Bob really. Yeah. Uh, he's the tri chair of it. Um, this weekend, well, the next three weekends. So we will have yeah, class B and C here, here in New Prague and Jordan. The C game. Shopping Indians qualified their first game is Sunday at 7 30 in Jordan. Okay. If you guys care. Feels really good. Feels awesome. Yeah. Angel, I think. 
Sarah, anything important? I just put up the school calendar because the start of the school year looks different than it has. Yes, we are starting soon. It's that time. This is very exciting about the elementary connect and assess days. I've heard nothing but fantastic feedback. Um, that's a really cool idea. Right. Yeah. And for CFC, we're doing connect and celebrate so that families feel like it's a celebration that their kids are entering into the Shakopee school. Assess really scares <laughs> people, a little pe parents of little people, like, hey, we're going to assess your kid when they walk in the door. So I, I worked with them, um, or I went through Dale and I went through Gary to give them my, my thoughts around this and why we should be celebrating and really building that market of our youngest learners into our into central family so that we can fill the schools as our enrollment grows. So just wanted to get that on your radar. So if you hear people talking about connect and celebrate, if that is that is what we're doing. If you want more information, reach out and I'll let you know what, what it's about. Thank you. That's cool stuff. David. Just I've said this for the past two or three months that ESSA, every student succeeds at, branded under the North Star <laughs> system because we're in the state of Minnesota, those results will be coming out very soon. Um, I, you guys are experts on it though, so I don't think it's going to be you. But um, there, is, there are going to be some complications with this because it's a lot of different categories. And so I will be interested to see um, exactly how it's presented and um, if there's any kind of response to it. Um, we'll be sharing the results here at some point after that comes out. The official public release date is August 30th, um, embargoed results um, for our internal use uh, come out the 27th, uh, media gets it the 28th, and then it goes out to the public the 30th. So, okay. a little asterisk next to an upcoming board meeting is going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, CAPS Open House, you'll be getting your invite, um, if yeah, not today. Not today. today. Okay. <laughs> I have, uh, we have a new coordinator with Ed Cox going to uh, the high school. Zach Idlebees, uh, who was a DLC over at West, is now uh, working within the department. And uh, so, yeah, get excited about that coming up. And, of course, that's the day after the designation ceremony. It's a busy week because you guys have a board meeting that week, too. But. Otherwise, uh, as someone that runs through the construction project on a regular basis, especially looking at the furniture, it's, it's things that are, are really progressing especially well in the last week or so. So it's kind of exciting to see how, that, how it's coming, but it's good. Jen, I had one other thing, sorry. <laughs> I can't <laughs> <about you. laughs> <laughs> No? What's that? I just wanted you to know because we talked about it a little bit at the retreat as well. That the school improvement plan that our buildings do, that work is happening now and it's scheduled by building. So if you're up about tomorrow's sun cap and the high school are doing that work and then Eagle Creek is doing it Wednesday, and the, uh, Sweeney have done some of that already. So it's over the next few weeks they're getting together. Jeff? I'm good. Okay. Um, I actually, sorry, I think I've got a question. Jeff, you might be willing to know. Or does anyone know are the road projects um, that goes past four of our buildings? Is that I was on just, pace? I, I was going to ask when the mayor was here. That. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Wait, was they actually upped it, or they shrunk, shrunk it by a week. Or did they? That was supposed to start on August 6th August in front of my yeah. place, and it didn't start until the 13th. So okay. I got to admit, though, today was the first day I was like, oh, hello, can't go oh. that way. I so. should have mentioned to East East got their new signage just uh, either yesterday or today for middle school. For middle school. So if you go past East, you'll there see on the on the on the building. They're still working on the monument sign, but on the building, you'll <coughs> see the new East Jack B East Middle School sign. Keith, anything? <laughs> We're good. We're good. Okay, let's adjourn. We get a motion to adjourn. Tony. <laughs> All right, very good. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye